Okay, good afternoon IB Biology. This is Mr. McGee and today we're going to be working on analyzing the results of your fruit fly lab report, the Drosophila Genetics. You're going to be presenting this on Google Classroom when you submit it and for this today we're going to be using Microsoft Excel. Remember you can use Google Sheets but as I said, one of the requirements for the class was that you have access to Microsoft Excel because I cannot guarantee that Google Sheets will have all the features that you need. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take a look at taking your data. You guys are going to need to make yourself a table just like this. And so I'm going to go to this sheet right there. And from this, you can see the different results we've got. I've got the wild type flies as well as the wingless apterous flies. And you can see each phenotype of male and female. All in total, we got 671 wild type and 196 wingless apterous flies. But when we look at the phenotypes of the male and females, you can see we've got a total of 413 males and 454 females. So in a way, we've got two sets of data we're going to have to analyze. So the first thing you need to do in your lab report is you need to present a table to us. Now, I've already given you a table of our data and presented it like this. You guys are going to, however, have to make your own, and it's pretty easy to do because you basically just come in a sheets program like this, you enter the data, you can just highlight columns or columns and rows like this and if you come up here to a little boxing or border key you can just click on the borders you want to highlight or go back here and unselect borders you can even come here and add borders to the right so it'll only do that you can pretty much come here and select and add the borders that you want to and then when you click on cells like this you can also come up here and add a background color and you don't want to add it super dark but it is nice to kind of put those on your headings I'm not saying you have to do it exactly like this, but it should be in the same format, although you can modify the fonts and the colors and stuff like that. So make yourself a table. The next thing all good lab reports have is a way to present the data. Now, we do not have a crazy amount of data here to work with, certainly not a scatter plot, but we certainly can present this in a categorical bar graph or a pie chart. You may present it as either or, but do not present both because they're pretty much showing the same thing and I want to see that you're choosing one to appropriately show your data. So either one is going to be the same. To do this you pretty much, at least on Microsoft Excel, you just click and highlight the data for let's say wild type and after us. Just highlight the totals and then we're going to now click the control key on our keyboard and then highlight wild and after us. So again we're just going to highlight these now come over here, click and hold control, and now highlight these here as well. By doing that, we told the computer this is our x-axis and this is our y-axis. So, or I'm sorry, our backwards here. Come on over here to the bar graph and we click on it and we got ourselves a bar graph. By the way, if you click and hold control on your keyboard and then wheel your mouse, it will do this. And you can change the size. If you click and hold control and wheel the mouse. Or you can come over in here to view and change the zoom size as well. So you will need to scale this and make it appropriate. Obviously don't turn in a lab report with it looking like this. The longer the better, but obviously you don't want to turn it in extreme as well. So notice it presents my data very nice. You may want to change your y-axis a little bit and you can do that by clicking on it. If you double click on it, it gives you the options on how where do you want it to start at and where do you want it to finish at. So in some cases when your bar graphs are really close together you might want to start them off different but these are nice and separate so we're going to start it at zero and end it at probably seven or eight hundred. Let's go ahead and end this at seven hundred because we don't need to end it all the way at eight hundred. And there you go just like this. Now give yourself an appropriate chart title and then you would just go ahead and copy that and paste it into your Google Docs file. So if I come here I've got a Google Docs file, I can pretty much paste my table appropriately like this and then you can move it and modify it accordingly. Now please do not just post it like this, you've got to give it an appropriate title and you also want to give it an access label so by clicking on options I can actually come over here and I can give it in this case a vertical access title. What do these numbers mean? Never give us a table or a graph that doesn't have any labels on it. Okay. So the other option you can do is a pie chart. You do the same thing by highlighting these totals and then clicking holding control and highlighting the categories. And you can come up here and make yourself a pie chart. 
make sure that it has a key at the bottom or there's another way to do it by playing around up here where you can actually insert titles within these boxes right there. So either one would be a good way to present categorical data. So the next thing we're going to do once you make yourself a table and then you make yourself a bar graph or a pie chart is we need to analyze or statistically analyze our data and to do this we're going to do a chi-square test. The whole purpose of a chi-square test, if you recall, is when we take different categories and we compare expected results to observed results. So in this case, we're going to need to do two chi-square tests. First one we're going to need to do is on the wild type versus the apteris, and then we're going to need to do one on males versus females. So because the males and females is actually easier, I'm going to actually do that one first. Let's do a chi-square test on the male versus the females. Okay. Now to do this, we're going to put our observed categories in here like this. Let's go ahead and put um, our total was 413 males and 454 females. Now if you recall, a null hypothesis is the default position in science. It's the assumption we should always take in the absence of any, uh, I guess, in the absence of any experiment. So in this case, what would have been our expected ratio? Well, if you think about it from an outside perspective, we would have no reason to think males and females would be any different, so we would expect a one-to-one -one ratio. And if this was a one-to-one -one ratio, it's basically 50-50. So to do this, I'm going to go ahead and add these up together, and that gives me 867. I'm then going to divide this by 2, so I can just do this on my calculator, or I could just hit equals 867 divided by 2, and that'll give me the answer. And then I can just enter the same thing below. Okay? So we have our, and I'll clear this out so that doesn't confuse you. So we have our observed values, and then we have our expected values, and again, the expected is true if the null hypothesis, or the, this is the expected values if the null hypothesis were true. Your expected value is always what your null hypothesis is. So to do this next one, we're going to do observed minus the expected, and you may do this on a hand calculator, but what I like about these sheets programs is it does all the work for you. You just hit equals, and this is box here, um, this is box B2, and we're going to make it subtract C2. So let's do B2 minus C2 and calculate it like that. The next box on the bottom is going to be equals box B3 minus box C3. It'll do it all for us. The next box here is going to be the same thing, but it's going to be squared or times itself. So I can go ahead and do the whole notions, but to make this a little bit easier, I'm just going to hit equals and since I've already kind of done this equation before, I'm actually going to hit D2, and it's going to put that in the box there, and then I'm going to make it multiply times itself. Now, we can't use X. We have to use Shift Star, and this is if you're using a Windows computer. Whoops. And we'll do D2 again. So this is a shortcut for me to not have to square it there. I could do the same thing down here as I did up there, but... A shortcut you can use in these programs is since this is technically an equation, I can actually copy that equation and then I can paste it down here by using control C and then pasting it using control V. Therefore, this is the same equation and to verify you can look up here and see that this is the equation used right there and then when I go to this box, you can see it's using the different equation. So I know that I'm correct and that it is using the appropriate boxes. So now we got that calculated, we're going to do the final category. I'm going to do in parentheses here E2 and then I'm going to make it divide itself by C2. And there we go. And again I'm going to copy this, control C and control V, paste it. And then the last thing I need to do is I'm going to need to sum it up because chi-square is x squared, I'll capitalize the x here, x squared, whoops, I don't know what I'm doing, x squared equals, and to make the square there, I can go over here to font and give it a superscript.
that way it looks a lot nicer and I'll click here and merge it over to this side just because it looks more cool and it looks more presentable so chi square to do this we just drag these down here and then we go to auto sum and there we go now if you recall our final unit here has three sig figs so I'm actually going to highlight these and I'm going to go ahead and change or highlight these and then I'm going to come here to numbers and I'm going to give it three sigs, sig figs of decimal places in my final number and there I go 1.94 is our chi-square value so now that we've got this calculated we're going to need to calculate our degrees of freedom and if you recall degrees of freedom is equal to the number of categories minus one category and in this case we have two categories that we are going to be testing in our chi-square. So degrees of freedom is going to be n minus 1. And in this case, we'll just have, in this case, we're just going to have one degree of freedom. So knowing our one degree of freedom, we're going to look at our table of critical values and look for 1.94. Let's go ahead and do this. Now before we do this, remember our null hypothesis is that male and females have the same ratio, a one-to-one -one ratio. There's an equal amount of males to females. We're going to see if that null hypothesis is true. Let's take a look at our table of critical values. So again, we're uh, 1.94. Here's our table of critical values. Blow this up just a tad bit more. Our degrees of freedom is 1 and we're looking for 1.94. It looks like we're going to be between 20 and 10%. Now again, our null hypothesis was that male and female is a one-to-one -one ratio. And in this case, it looks like we are still gonna accept our null hypothesis. Only when we hit that 5% threshold do we reject the null hypothesis in favor of an alternative. And in this case, our alternative would have been that our null hypothesis was not the expect, or our null hypothesis was not a one-to-one -one ratio. So it looks like we will keep our null hypothesis and that should be your conclusion. Make sure you cite that as a conclusion and maybe explain why it may have been a slightly different than that. Because notice, it's only a 20 to 10% chance that our null hypothesis was actually true. Uh, you know, even though our null hypothesis will be accepted, it is a very low chance that it is even true. It's likely that it's not a one-to-one -one ratio, even though we're still gonna accept it. Final thing we're going to take a look at, and I'm going to keep all the equation stuff in place. I'm just going to delete this here, which is what I love about the Sheets program. You can keep all the math, just delete your values right there. The final one we're going to do is wild type and apterus. So I'm going to put wild as my category and then apterus. And then to do the chi-square on this, we put our categories of 671 and 196. Now again, our expected value in our null hypothesis would be a three to one ratio. So unlike male and female, which would be a one to one ratio with our null hypothesis, our null hypothesis with wild and apterus would be a three to one ratio. And this was not the case before Gregor Mendel. Remember back in Gregor Mendel's day, the expected value would have been one to one and back then you recall they were accepting the blending hypothesis. However, Gregor Mendel was able to overcome that and because Gregor Mendel was able to give us evidence that it is a three to one ratio, we now accept a three to one ratio. And that is why our null hypothesis will now be a three to one ratio. So looking at wild and apterous flies here, let's go ahead and calculate a total by summing it. And again, 867 is our total. So our expected value is going to be 3 to 1 of what 867 is. So to calculate this, we're just going to multiply it times 0.75%. And in this case, let's do equals. And I'll, for the sake of this here, just do 867. And then I'm going to multiply this by 75% or 0.75. Okay. And then the bottom number here for Apterus is going to be 867, and I'm going to multiply that by 25%. That will give us an expected 3 to 1 ratio. So again, our null hypothesis is that this is a 3 to 1 ratio, 
and this is what it would be if it was exactly a 3 to 1 ratio. Here's our chi-square results. Now again, we are going to have 1 degrees of freedom. I am not going to tell you the results on this. I pretty much showed you how to do this, so I will let you guys decipher what should we conclude from this, uh, from this chi-square test of this null hypothesis. So again, when you write your paper up, we want to see that you have a table, that you have some way to present that table in the form of a bar graph or a pie, uh, pie chart, and we want to see your statistical analysis with two chi-square tests. Make sure you explicitly show your chi-square test separately and you show your results and then you confirm these results, or you report these results in your results section of your lab report. In your discussion piece, discuss why we got those results, or if we didn't, discuss why you think we didn't. This is where I want to see you as a scientist brainstorm, and that is, after all, the good habit of being a scientist. When you are done, you simply keep everything on a Google Sheet file like this, and then I'm going to need you guys to attach your Google Sheet file to Google Classroom and submit it like this. That is pretty much all there is to this. I uh, wish you guys good luck.